Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host Bill Spicer. Today we examine one of the deadliest techniques available to the fly fisher, using streamers. With new refinements and methods and changes in equipment such as line availability and advances in fly construction have made the use of streamers one of the most deadly methods available. We'll discuss equipment, flies, techniques and fish habitat. It promises to be a great show, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. Oh, away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby, look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Ontario Tourism. Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. Joining me today is top guide Ken Collins, owner of Grand River Trout Fitters in Fergus, Ontario. Ken is one of the most knowledgeable fly fishers I know and has been a guide and a fly fishing teacher for decades. Fergus is a picturesque town and is known for its friendly people, quaint shops, and terrific bed and breakfasts. It's a strong, growing, and vibrant community, proud of its rich heritage and blessed with incredible natural surroundings, such as the Allura Gorge and Conservation Area, Bellwood Lake, and the Grand River. Fish on, fish on. Big fish, oh. big fish. Oh, he let go, no. he let go. Oh, That's was one. He, big? Oh, he was big, he was he big. He was big, that he was, was big. One. Oh yeah. That I fish just seen was this. that wide. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo. Dang, nam. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Why are streamers so effective? As a fish matures, its choice of food changes from invertebrates, such as mayflies, caddisflies, or stoneflies, to flesh, such as sculpin, dace, or even their own species. Why this change happens is simple. As the fish grows, the amount of nourishment it needs to survive increases. Eating bait fish satisfies this need. Although this doesn't mean a fish will never eat an invertebrate again, they will. A well-placed nymph in a trout's feeding lane will always be taken. There are times when a streamer will take fish when nothing else will work. Watch as Tom Rosenbauer shows us how effective they can be. Wow, that's a nice fish, too. Wow, that fish was in shallow water. My God, we could have caught him on a dry. <laughs> I don't think so. No? I don't know, he was, he was looking. He was looking up. When I was a kid, reading books, there was this about book I had trout? about the, yeah, about Dan Bailey catching Yellowstone brown trout. Well, you're doing it now, Tom. And uh, you know, I, I just I just had this vivid image of Dan Bailey with this beautiful butter-colored brown trout, and that picture stuck with me for years. Wow, that's a good fish. Head. In shallow, shallow water. Wow. He's in a pout. No, he's not. The secret to success is to understand where fish will be in the river. Fish have certain needs to survive. These needs are shelter, food, and access to security such as deep water. With these needs in mind, you can determine where the trout will be holding. Lies such as log jams, undercut banks, 
Shadows, ledges, and drop-offs are definite areas that will attract trout. Don't forget about any other object that will break the current and cause a seam, such as a boulder, or a submerged rock, or a fallen tree. The best streamer fishermen I know have learned to think like a fish. They understand how a bait fish behaves and how a predatory fish reacts. Predatory fish are accustomed to smaller fish fleeing away from them. They are not accustomed to being attacked by a 4 inch fish. A common mistake is to cast the fly and retrieve it so it appears to swim directly towards the fish it's supposed to be fleeing from. Watch as Ken Collins shows us how to mend line so the streamer swims downstream. We've got an interesting current seam here, folks. This, this main little current bead is just a hummer of a piece of deep water that's running way out there. You can see it running really fast, and then between me and it is back swirl and calm water and fish rising. Um, but So what I got to try to do here is I got to try and get a presentation that goes through there that looks right. So what I've suggested to Bill earlier was that I was actually making an upstream cast, and then what I want to do is take a nice big wide roll cast out to the middle of that current, and now here I am being able to drag my fly on that downstream injured minnow look all the way down through that backwater, and I just find that number one, that fly gets deeper, number two, that that fly is actually swimming when he's injured downstream, I've produced more big fish on that particular presentation when you got difficult currents when there's so many different current speeds between you and your objective, how do you control it? It's one of the hardest things a fly fisher has. Fish I like that. Yeah. That's a new style. Yeah, we just we just went to move and I allowed this to sink down. There and when you I go. went to reel back, ooh. There you go. You grab move it. out of that current. If it doesn't bother, it looks like a bass. I don't know what it is. I gotta say a smallmouth. Think so? Yeah. I gotta say a smallmouth. It's got the wrong color for brown. I think so. It is, it's a good smallmouth. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You get anything along here, can't you? There's yeah. walleye in here, there's pike in here, and there is some really good quality smallmouth. Okay. Come on, you. Good. Lovely Small fish. About 14 inches, huh? Yeah, I would say. <coughs> Crazy. You never know what you're going to catch in the Grand. Yeah. Very nice fish. Very nice fish. Very nice. Good I, eyes, too. I, 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 he was staying down, but you said it was the wrong color, so. And away he goes. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Northern <laughs> and a carp. And we're done. Yeah. You can't do a grand slam any better than that. <laughs> oh, you guys, you already got the brown. I already got the brown, yeah. It's very important to keep the fly at the same level as the fish and make it behave like it's under attack and trying to escape. Use both the rod hand and the line hand to tease the streamer. It doesn't take much movement with either hand to move the fly a great distance. Try to make the streamer look like the natural it is designed to imitate. If it's a minnow, make it swim like it's slightly injured. If it's a crayfish, make it swim with short bursts and pauses. Try and make a leech swim with slow, undulating and steady motion. Streamer fishing is not just cast and retrieve. Watch as Ken Collins shows me a unique way of presenting a crayfish pattern from a previous trip. If these fish are lethargic and down, then what we're going to do is we're going to hop a vertical crayfish presentation through them. And what we're going to do is you just line up where you want to go with this indicator there, Bill. Mm -hmm. So you toss one out there. And then you mend if you need to, if it's not that currenty. And then you're just going to tap that indicator at a good crayfish pace, looking for indications at bottom as you tap it and tap it and tap it and tap it and tap it. And what's going to happen on a strike is that indicator just isn't going to come back up. That indicator is going to stay down. Okay and then just set it up. So okay. I'm going to switch your rods. I'll take care of this. This is a new technique for me. Yeah, this is vertical, vertical streamer fishing, I call it. Mm -hmm. 
roll cast starts are better because they're quit weighted systems and just let it plug again that's a custom made line for roll casting perfection so we need to keep up the pace so we stay above it so you know it's only about three or four feet deep here yeah right? well off that pickup it is and it gets deep again like we've been in but what you can do with this presentation which is really neat is that you can stop moving it and see what angle your indicator sits at when it touches bottom mm -hmm. and you can indicate to yourself just how blooming close you are or far yeah. you are so i just said we got the indicator about what four feet yeah to the to the shot to scenario the, yeah so watch this do nothing just do a mend for me now watch it oh no set that not a very big one again. Ken calls it frog water, which is pretty much dead water over here. They uh, they don't seem to want to be out in the current at all. It's still just too high. And again, water. with an indicator. Now this is different for me with smallmouth fishing hmm. with an indicator. It's definitely different. You uh, you twitch the rod. Oh, that's, that's not a bad fish. fish. That's, that's not 16. a bad fish. Yeah. It's not a bad fish. You, you twitch it, not like a dead drift that you were used to with nymphs. Yeah, you certainly, look at how much he's bent this rod. There we go, very, very good. But he's okay. a decent average. Again, yeah. crayfish right in crayfish the yap, right, right, right on the top. Oh, he had it skinny hooked though, look at this. <laughs> look how skinny hooked he had that. That was just about to be lost. Let's rejoin Tom Rosenbauer for some small stream action on the East Gallatin. Right. On a dead... Whoa! 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 Wow. Frisky they get, fish. They got big hearts in this river. Wow, they do. <laughs> Gotta touch them, though. Doesn't count until we touch them. Fish. You're right, they have big hearts, Ben. God, that's <laughs> a fat fish. Looks like a little steelhead. Beautiful. Use a six or seven weight fly rod because a heavier rod is needed for casting the large flies that you'll be using. Use reels to match the rod weights. Smooth drags are only needed when fishing large fish. Otherwise, the reel is just there to hold the line. Choice of line will dictate by conditions. Lines such as bass tapers are specifically designed to help turn over large air resistant flies. Also have either a sinking tip line or sinking leaders, and when fishing deep water, have a full sink line as it will keep the fly at a constant depth longer. No tapered leaders are needed here. When fishing a floating line, use a seven to nine foot leader of at least 10 pound test. When fishing any sinking line, use only a four foot leader of 10 pound test. Listen as professional guide OJ McDonald gives us some casting tips on how to deal with heavy weighted systems. I've got on a five foot piece of LC13, which is 13 grains of tungsten per foot. This is one of the fastest sinking sink tips you're gonna find. The problems associated with big flies and big sink tips is they're very awkward to cast. A lot of beginner fishermen really struggle presenting their flies because quite often the fly will end up in the back of your head, it'll end up in a tree, or it'll be on the bottom of the river stuck to a rock. So you have to understand that retrieving this and keeping your fly off the bottom is important. So one of the tricks that I use to getting my line back out into the river is I'll pull my sink tip out of the water. It's called the 50-50 rule. It means 50% of your sink tip's in the water, 50% is out, and a basic roll cast will pull your fly out of the water and send it in front of you. Now, that wasn't a very good cast because I've only got about 10 feet of line out of the tip of my rod, five foot sink tip and a three foot leader. That's not gonna cover much water. So I will pull off about 20 feet of line and zigzag my rod tip so that I'll pull the line out of my rod while keeping my fly suspended off the bottom of the river. Then I can form a D-loop and cast that fly. 
It's just called line management, zigzag, whatever you'd like to call it. There's no fancy terms here, but it just keeps your fly moving, keeps it off the bottom, and allows you to pull 50% of that sink tip out of the water so that you can produce a nice roll cast. Oh, got him. Got him, got him that time. It, that's it. We got him. We that got time. him. We taught him. That'll Boy, he, uh, I'll get him on the reel. Yes. Well, this is a decent fish. Not it's huge. Not bad. 14. 14, nice 15. Colors. Nice colors. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right, and that's current. He'll fight. He'll fight good, yeah. Yeah, he's not that big. Nice but boy, he just, he just slammed it, didn't he? He was just slammed it. it. And that's why. Yeah, I get him over here. And I'm going to let you can handle them. It is late in the season. Don't want to handle these too much. Yeah, and, and it was quick. The, the fly just barely hit the water, and, yeah. and he took it. So that's yeah, nice. uh, this downstream uh, yeah. uh, return is, is really effective. They, they grab it right away. What do you think? And the dog has to. One? Yeah, I got to give us a goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky, who's that? OK, you say goodbye. <laughs> let him go. There, there he goes. Go. <laughs> you almost got a little bath there. <laughs> almost. I got half the sleeves. That's not bad. That's a half bath. Oh, well, he messed up that fly pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Fly selection today consists of a number of attractor streamer patterns in different colors. Don't worry so much about specific patterns, but in terms of shades, colors, light and dark, tan and black. Specific patterns don't seem to be as important. Fish will almost always take a streamer. Big fish eat other fish, which provides lots of calories. Streamers are big and imitate fish and other high calorie snacks. If I have not had a strike within 20 minutes, it's time to switch to another color. <laughs> now you were just you were just playing there and, uh, and ran a little wet fly through there. Yeah. And you got a little one, but I mean it's not bad. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the accessories in <laughs> your mouth. <laughs> well, you'll learn to do a few things. Sorry I'm going to let this. you do it all here. This, this is a complete guide. <laughs> oh, aren't you? There we go. <laughs> here, let me take that other rod out. That's all right. You got it? Oh, yeah. Rocky, come on, leave it alone. So yeah, I just I just wanted to see if that investigate that little run with a little wet fly game, and uh, Paul's a wet fly through there, and uh, nice bright colored one, mind you. Get out of here, go. So Rocky. that ended up sparking up a little attack, and uh, you know, nice little brown. You know, the thing that's going to be really remarkable about this, Bill, we put those in maybe that might have been a bigger stalker. Mm -hmm. But uh, typically, we put them in 10 inches, maybe somewhere around there, one-year-olds and uh, that have been in the hatchery for one-year-old. And this is how fast he grew. That's how much food's in this river. Yeah, this is, this is a bug factory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, that is a classic. We'll take a look at that and little I, guy right there. Let's go and have yourself a little swim away. Nice, nice fish. fish. Nice fish. Good fish big fish. There we go. There we go. Yes. That is a nice fish. Nice Woo. fish. Don't know what it. Oh, and he let go. No, he not let again. go. Oh, what a great technique. And you know what? I think that was Mr. Brownie. Oh, that was a big brownie. That was I'm, I'm, Mr. I'm brownie. pretty sure he fought like a brownie. Did everything yeah. like a brownie. Oh, oh yes, he let go. My goodness. <laughs> Ken Collins has taught literally hundreds of people the art of fly fishing and fly casting over the years. Not only that, he is one of the best guides I've used while making the new fly fisher. That is why I keep coming back to him. I learn something new every time I'm with him. He also has an e-commerce business that can take care of all your gear needs. I highly recommend you contact Ken for your next fly fishing adventure. Also include Fergus as a destination. 
This drive to economical, and beautiful town is blessed with a world-class tailwater trout fishery known as the Grand River. Plenty of public access to the river is well maintained by volunteer conservation groups such as Friends of the Grand. Let's join author and new fly fishing host Tom Rosenbauer and tie the knot fly fishing owner Molly Semenik as they float the Yellowstone River. That's a fish? It's no. Yeah, it is. Is it? It's a good fish. Yeah. It is. I thought it was a snag. So did oh, I. nice fish. For, like one of the first casts. Big brown, brown trout. Nice. Took the streamer too. Cool. Tom, I'm going to pull over to these rocks and get into some slower water. All right. Now look at that water that he was in. That was so nondescript. Who would have thought? Pretty fish. Mm. Ooh, that's a good shot. He's going to need a rest. You'd be surprised with this current how shallow I have to go. Rod tip up, head up. Beautiful. Woohoo! Barbless hook, it'll come right yes. up. Keep him in the water. Keep him in the water. Yeah. Uh, 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 sorry. Oh. We'll get another one. Ha! Yes! That's nice. what I wanted for Tom. Thank yes. you, Molly. Oh. Some anglers don't like to streamer fish because they think it's too easy. It's too much like lure fishing. Nothing could be farther from the truth. When done properly, streamer fishing is hard work. There's so much more to streamer fishing than casting and retrieving. For more information on today's show and other shows in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next week. I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Do you want to learn more about this crazy and exciting world of fly fishing? Watch the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel.